Okay, good afternoon, everyone. This is the Tuesday, May 16th meeting of the Transportation Parking Commission. This meeting is being audio and video recorded. My name is Donna Lascalia, I'm the Director of Public Works. I'm the Chair of the Commission. Uh, Beth, when you are ready, please call the roll. Donna? Here. Jody? Here. Jamie? Here. Devin? Here. Diana? Here. Nancy? Here. Karen? Here. Jamila? Here. Carolyn? Here. And Adam? Do not see Adam. Yeah, I just um, admitted him, Beth. I just oh. admitted Adam. Thanks, Chief. You have a full commission here. Okay, thanks. And again, my apologies to everyone for the uh, link problem on the agenda, um, but the meeting is being recorded, so we'll be able to uh, release the the full um, the full tape to those who, who uh, may not have been able to work through the technical difficulties. Um, so with that being said, I'll open it up to public comment. If there's anyone here from the public who would like to uh, address the commission on any matter. I would request that if you're here to speak to an agenda, an agenda item that you hold your comment until we reach that agenda item, just makes for a more orderly meeting. Um, but if there is anyone here from the public who'd like to speak to the commission on something not on the agenda, uh, you are welcome to raise your hand and we will recognize you and hear your comments. Is there anyone here to, to speak to the commission? Uh, I see one hand and that is Jacqueline's iPhone. I'm going to unmute you. I just need uh, your name and city or town or residence uh, for the uh, record, please. Uh, hi, my name is Jacqueline McCraner. I'm in Ward 3 of Northampton. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, thank you all for, for being here and giving me this opportunity to speak. Um, I, my comments are asked DOT downtown Northampton complete streets corridor and intersection improvements on Main Street Route 9 presentation that was given via Zoom on April 6th. Um, I was concerned about the crosswalk at the Main Street, King Street, Pleasant Street intersection, uh, narrowing the roadway on Main Street to be one lane in each direction. Uh, the number of parking spaces on Main Street, um, a healthy mature trees and uh, truck eating, the truck eating bridge at Main Street and legal truck routes. So kind of going in that order or close to that order, starting off with the crosswalk at Main Street, King Street, Pleasant Street. I'm really hopeful that um, folks will take into consideration the potential danger of having traffic and pedestrians and bikes all crossing that intersection at the same time. I understand it would be in parallel um, movements, um, but uh, it would be great if, if the city does agree to that to also maybe have one um, traffic light cycle where all four lanes are stopped so that um, you know folks with disabilities uh, can cross safely and just folks who aren't comfortable crossing while traffic is moving um, give those folks a, an opportunity to, to cross on the diagonal and just to cross safely. Um, narrowing the roadways so that Main Street is just one way in each direction. You know, we're a, we have a historic, broad, sweeping, curving thoroughfare and um, a lifelong resident that I spoke to, she can't, you know, remember where she read it, but she said that we have one of the oldest, undisturbed, widest historic Main Streets in the country. And I feel like to um, make this one way in each direction, I understand it's for traffic and safety concerns, but it does destroy the centuries old historic character look and feel of downtown. And I feel like some sort of historic commission, whether it's the Northampton Historical Commission or the Massachusetts Historical Commission really should be involved in that discussion um, before we change that maybe try to introduce some fresh, clean, visible paint lines and new signage to help with um, traffic calming and safety uh, 
and pedestrian and bike safe safety as well. Um, the parking spaces on Main Street, I think there's 130 uh, parking spaces on Main Street right now. This plan that was presented on the 26th of April, that's at the 25% design development phase, if I remember correctly, is advocating to reduce that number of parking spaces by 57 so that there would be like a total of 73 parking spaces on Main Street. Whether I'm in line to get food at La Vera Cruzana or having like a nice sit down dinner at East, uh, East Side Grill, I'm always hearing people um, complaining about not being able to find parking on Main Street. And we've got an aging population, an elderly uh, population, and no matter how many accessible parking spots are put on Main Street, there's always going to be more people with disabilities and who are elderly than those number of available parking spaces. And so I really urge the city to, to think twice about reducing the number of parking spaces um, on Main Street. Jacqueline, uh, thank you for your comments. We do have to ask that folks limit their time just as city council, if you wouldn't mind just wrapping up for me, we'd appreciate it. Okay, great. Um, two last things, and I'll try to make it as quick as possible. Healthy, mature trees. If we can keep the, the healthy, mature trees that we have downtown, that would be great. Trees that are 35 to 200 years old are the ones that give us our um, oxygen and carbon sequestration. And lastly, I think um, Councillor Gore is going to speak to this, but signage, um, improved legal truck route signage for heavy commercial vehicles to um, find their way around the truck eating bridge at Main Street um, and to take the legal route if they get that far that goes from Main Street to Holly Street, Phillips Place, Pomeroy Terrace back onto Route 9 East. Um, we really need to improve that signage and also so tractor trailers don't go through the back narrow residential streets um, like North Street to get to um, the Coca-Cola production facility in the Northampton Industrial Park or whatever ends up going in there after Coca-Cola leaves. So um, I'm really yeah. advocating for that signage. Yeah, to be thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your comments and, and we do have to uh, move on. So thank you. Thanks. Um, next up is Claudia Lefko. Claudia, just your 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 name and uh, gotcha. city and town of residence, please. Uh, Claudia Lefko, 40 Valley Street. First, I just want to know why the committee isn't meeting in person. It seems so much easier for a lot of people to go to a meeting, and now that the you know COVID is over, so that's my my recommendation. I'm hoping that the the committee will go in person. And secondly, just to make sure people got my email that I sent a few hours ago, just after noon. Yes, thank you, Claudia. That was distributed okay. to the commission okay. and that will be appended to the official minutes. And so shall I make a comment about that now or wait till it comes on the agenda? Um, I think it would be best if if you hold your comment until okay. we reach out on the agenda. Fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, anyone else who wishes to address the commission on an item not on the agenda? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to approval of the minutes from the prior meeting, September 27th, 2022, and March 21st, 2023. May I have a motion for a positive recommendation, please? I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Who seconded that? Devin. Okay, thank you, Devin. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, Beth, please call the roll. Uh, Donna. Yes. Jody. Yes. Jamie. Yes. Devin. Yes. Diana. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Karen. Yes. Jamila. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. And Adam. Yes. Passes both both. Minutes, both sets of minutes are approved unanimously. Thank you, Beth. Next up is report reports from departments and subcommittees. I'll start off with a couple of updates from DPW. 
We've contracted with Caracas Construction Corporation for full depth reconstruction of Winter Street. It's a long awaited utility project. Um, so we've got water and sewer mains and service connections, as well as sidewalks and a full uh, roadway reconstruction. So that'll be complete by this fall. Safe Routes to School, MassDOT has contracted with Gomes Construction Company to complete improvements that will enhance pedestrian safety near Bridge Street School. The contractor has demobilized and will remobilize in late June after school is out to complete the project. Uh, another mass DOT project, Damon Road, has resumed and is scheduled to be completed by the end of 2023. The contractor will be working at the intersection of King and Bridge Roads this week. I don't know if anyone else on the commission has any updates for us, Carolyn? I have a couple. Um, <clears throat> so we've been working on the Connecticut River Greenway connection from the Greenway Park, um, potentially to Hatfield, but there was we weren't sure if that was going to be a tip project or just a trails project. Hatfield voted at town meeting overwhelmingly to support connection to um, the Elm Court in Hatfield. So that means that it can go on the tip as a transportation project. Um, so we'll be proceeding um, towards design of that um, uh, transportation bike path connector there. Um, in terms of um, other mass out projects, um, we're starting to review the 30 or so comments that came in for Picture Main Street from the public hearing and the 10 day period afterwards. Um, so that's uh, moving forward. Uh, MassDOT's going to officially respond to those comments. Um, also, the roundabout on North King Street, we received a notice from MassDOT that the um, roundabout project has a, a project notification form completed. So that's sort of going tracking along in the next steps for design. Um, and finally, I, there may be other people on this um, on the commission who um, will call this out, but this is bike week and the Northampton has a bike breakfast tomorrow um, downtown at seven, starting at 7.30 a.m. I think, um, may have that wrong. I think it starts at seven actually. 7.30. 7.30, yeah. That's what I'm planning on. Okay, great. You can go into those details, counselor. <laughs> Thanks, that's all. Thank you. Anyone else on the commission have any updates for us or anything to add? Okay, seeing and hearing none, we'll move on to matters before the commission. First is a proposed ordinance relative to parking on Locust Street. So just by way, I'll give a little background on this and I will read the ordinance. So an ordinance was proposed at the March 2023 TPC meeting to prohibit parking on the north side of Locust Street from Star Avenue to a point 80 feet west. We received many comments from the public in response to this ordinance, many of which were about visibility issues happening uh, at the nearby streets. So we took a little bit of time to get some feedback from Abutters, and we thank, uh, I thank Councillor Jarrett for his uh, significant outreach efforts. Um, and so what we've done is we have revised the original ordinance to include two more blocks up to Plymouth Avenue. So Strar Avenue to Sumner Avenue, we are proposing a 60 foot no parking zone from Strar Avenue headed west. And this is going to increase visibility. I mean, we were hearing sort of the same comments from all of the abutters is that anyone trying to exit side streets onto Route 9 is having to sort of creep out into traffic on Route 9 to avoid the parked cars, you know, which are blocking their sight lines to then sort of cross, you know, to take a left or to take a right. And, and that obviously um, is creating a safety issue. So, you know, what we did is we, we sort of moved through this entire corridor keeping Councillor Jarrett's outreach efforts in mind uh, as we did that. And, and we tried to create a scenario where we could keep some parking um, and it, you know a limited amount of parking for folks who may not have other options, but really try to clear the area out to the extent possible. So again, you know, we're, we're running in a much larger stretch than was originally planned. 
um, or that we had originally proposed in response to significant public comment. Um, what I'm going to do is read the ordinance just for the record, and I'm going to ask Councilor Jarrett to speak a little bit um, about his outreach efforts uh, prior to uh, making a motion. So uh, this is an ordinance relative to parking on Lucas Street. Uh, being ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton and City Council assembled as follows that uh, section one, that section 312-102 of the Code of Ordinances be amended as follows. Section 312-102, schedule one, parking prohibited at all times, location, Locust Street, side, northerly, from Straw Avenue to a point 60 feet westerly, location, Locust Street, side, northerly, from Sumner Avenue to a point 70 feet easterly, Location, Locust Street side, northerly from Sumner Avenue to a point 40 feet westerly. Location, Locust Street side, northerly from Fairfield Avenue to a point 40 feet easterly. Location, Locust Street side, northerly from Fairfield Avenue to Plymouth Avenue. And I would ask uh, Maggie, if you could please put the, um, the map of the proposed changes up just so folks can see that. Um, and now I'll ask Councillor Jarrett if you just take a moment to talk to us a little bit about the outreach that you did and the concerns of some of the abutters in the area, if you wouldn't sure. mind. Sure, thank you, Director. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I wanted to make sure I reached some of the folks who lived in the area uh, that I didn't have email addresses for, may not, may not have been reached out to in other ways. So. I flyered um, some of the cars that that regularly park along Locust Street and did reach uh, a residence uh, who there are some residents there who don't have sufficient off street parking. Um, so I think that this proposal is a good compromise It will preserve some of the on street parking on Locust Street and and address uh, the concerns at all the intersections. Um, there's, you know, continued strong support from constituents for addressing this issue. I, the vegetation issue, which is separate but related, uh, has been partially addressed. I've asked the building department to confirm that it's now in compliance. Uh, I'm not sure if it is. Um, and I uh, also just wanted to uh, hear from you, Director, if your thoughts on, you know, one of the thoughts that this this could enable is is um, a better, more protected bike lane uh, along the road. And I was curious uh, your if you've moved on that, or if, if if there are other other areas that you're thinking about for for this intersection or for these intersections. Yes, thank you, Councillor. And and just to um, sort of move the conversation along, um, I, I think procedurally, um, I'd like to ask for a motion for a positive recommendation for this. Move a positive recommendation. Second. Thank you. Um, and just in response to Councillor Jarrett's questions, you know we. We looked very carefully at this corridor. Um, the police chief and I were actually uh, out yesterday morning, um, just kind of observing traffic from the corner of uh, Straw and and um, and Route Nine, just just kind of in preparation for this meeting. So everything was very fresh in our mind. We wanted to see where folks were parked and how they were parked and how they were behaving, kind of moving in and out of the side streets. And I'll ask the chief for her comments on that in a moment. Um, one of the things that we have determined is that this is a very busy corridor. So, Councillor, to uh, or obviously a very busy corridor. So, Councillor, to address your comments, um, we believe that further study on this by our engineering firm is warranted. Um, so, it is our intention to engage Foss and O'Neill, who does a lot of traffic calming work for us and a lot of engineering work for us to actually take a look at the corridor from Cooley Dickinson Hospital all the way up through um, Florence to just kind of give us um, some options for enhanced pedestrian crossings, enhanced bicycle facilities, um, and, and just kind of overall improvements that we may be able to do to the roadway, whether it be with line striping or delineators or just some sort of temporary installations um, that could enhance safety. So that's that's something that we will be working on um, just to, to answer your question. And just, Chief, if you wouldn't mind, just a couple of words, um, it just kind of about, you know, our, our observations um, from yesterday. 
Sure, thank you. Yeah, always good to go out and do the site visits. It puts everything in perspective, I think. Um, definitely while we were there, and we were there for a good amount of time observing traffic, I think the most common thing that we saw and really kind of frightening for traffic were uh, vehicles that were on Stry Avenue waiting to get out and go left onto Route 9, that actually, because there were cars parked on the right, um, you know, in the area right now that you can park in, um, they would pull out partially into the, the kind of northbound travel lane and then realized that there was a car coming and then they actually had to put it in reverse and go back. So they're going over like where pedestrians would be crossing there on the crosswalk. Um, certainly a dangerous situation that happened, I think three times and we weren't there that long. So that that's really not a good situation at all. I've talked about this intersection before and I think it's one of those that we don't want any driver to pull up to an intersection and feel nervous about that intersection or say things in conversation like, oh, I hate that intersection. It feels so unsafe, right? And I think that's what we have there with that one and certainly uh, consistent with our observations and we've all probably driven it before as well. So I'm really looking forward to this change. I, I think it will greatly improve sight lines and, and safety in that area. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Beth. Um, I just did not catch who the second uh, person was that seconded the motion. I did. Thank you. Councilor Gore. Okay, any uh, discussion from members of the commission on this proposed ordinance or any other comments or questions? And now I'll ask if there are any members of the public here who wish to speak uh, about the ordinance. Uh, happy to take your comments if there are. Okay, so uh, overall, uh, a very significant improvement to sight lines and certainly will give uh, more space to uh, bicyclists. And, and um, I, I think it addresses um, sort of the concerns of the abutters. Um, it's, it's a good, uh, I, I think, compromise to open this area up um, while we await our consultants' work, um, which, as we all know, is is kind of a, a timing issue, um, and, and it's definitely several months away. Um, but we always seek to make temporary uh, improvements to the extent possible, and and uh, and I think that this is a good move. So, uh, if there is no further discussion, and I'm just looking for hands uh, or comments, and I don't see any. So, seeing and hearing none, Beth, I will ask for a, a roll call. Donna? Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Devin? Yes. Diana? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamila? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. And Adam? Yes. Passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Next is a proposed ordinance relative to lowering the default speed limit to 25 miles an hour. Um, this is a very uh, lengthy ordinance, um, so I am not going to read it, uh, although it will be um, appended to the uh, official minutes, obviously. Um, this ordinance um, is uh, historically um, has has been uh, circulating throughout the city or this proposed ordinance has been circulating throughout the city for quite some time. And uh, so I'd like to recognize councilors uh, Jarrett and councilors Nash who are both here um, to talk to us about this. So I, I think uh, we just need a little context and description of sort of the intention of this and then we can have a, a discussion about it. So I will cede the floor to councilor Nash who I see unmuted. Hello, thank you, Donna. And um, it's always nice to be back at the TPC and um, where this order's been for a while. And um, so first of all, I just want to kick off by thanking Councillor O'Donnell, uh, Mayor Narkowitz. I want to thank uh, uh, Director Lascali and Chief Casper. I want to thank the TPC. Many of you folks um, have discussed this back in the day. And um, and I also want to thank Councillor Jarrett for his his uh, co-sponsorship here. He's done a lot of that. That the improvements here re re to this ordinance reflect a lot of his work. Um, so I 
I just I think the best place to start with describing this is the uh, statutory speed limit is is not this. I hope everybody can see that. That is, you know, that's what we that's a regulatory speed limit. And this is the speed limit sign that we usually associate with, you know, posted speed limits. The statutory speed limit is is not this, but it is this. It's not there. It's a unposted speed limit. And this would apply to this change would apply to certain roads in the city where we we don't have a regulatory speed limit in place. It's rather an unposted statutory speed limit. Um, in recent years, uh, TPC has discussed uh, streets like High Street in Florence and Olive Street off of South Street. These are examples of streets that don't have regulatory speed limits that would be subject to this change. I, I wanna say that um, this is, this is a strange, part of the reason that this, um, this change has taken so long to get to where we are right now has to do with the fact that as Mayor Narkowitz described it, it was a thought problem. How do you ask somebody to drive a speed limit that isn't posted? And that's a really great question. Um, and thus it started, uh, myself and eventually uh, Councillor Jarrett and I going down this path with with Director Lascalia and, and, and Chief Casper uh, to figure out ways that if we're going to change the speed limit for these uh, these situations where we have a statutory speed limit and not be able to change speed limits elsewhere and, and think more broadly in terms of a, a plan for uh, speed limits across the city, it was kind of like a, a null, empty gesture that, and, and, but the research that uh, Councillor Jarrett and I have done, uh, what we found is that we actually, we, uh, we can create a speed plan for the entire city, that we can uh, make changes to our regulatory speed limits, and that ultimately with, with a good speed traffic speed plan for the city, we can then start designing our roadways, not for higher speed limits, but, but for the speed limits that we would like to see that match our, our traffic calming, uh, pedestrian friendly, cyclist friendly uh, roadways. So that is, that's my overview of this. And I, I'm wondering if uh, Councillor Jarrett has a few words to add as well. Yeah, thank you, Jim. Um, so yeah, I see this as one element of a broad long term plan to reduce speeds, increase safety throughout the city. I think the main question that we need to be asking is whether 25 miles an hour is a more appropriate speed for these thickly settled business districts and business districts. I think it's clear that it is both from a safety and and a livability perspective. Um, I think we probably all recognize that just changing a speed limit will have a limited effect on driver speed um, and the longer term effect that this uh, speed limit that will will it mean it will help that, that that it will help inform the design of roadways as we redo them and in its determining the priorities for traffic calming implementation. I think the messaging about the change is important as well and and signage is one piece of that. Now, in this case, the signage is um, typically uh, municipalities will put a speed limit 25 unless otherwise posted in thickly settled areas. As you enter the municipality, you can see that in Greenfield and uh, a number of others uh, in the area. <clears throat> um, so that can be put up as our budgets allow. And it's important to recognize that our budgets for traffic enforcement, for traffic calming uh, are limited. And you know we're going to continue to focus on the highest impact areas. Uh, we can't expect the police and the DVW to do more than the resources that we're, we give them. And I know I'm going to be communicating to residents that this is a long-term change not, and not an immediate fix. Um, I will say though that I've, I've long been an advocate for additional funding for traffic calming and design changes. I think 
physical roadway design changes provide a long-term benefit for a one-time cost um, rather than uh, an ongoing cost or short-term effect uh, of enforcement, though that is certainly needed in some cases. Uh, so, um, you know, the, this, is a, this is a look to the future um, and, uh, and one, one step in, in saying how, how fast should people go? Uh, what is appropriate? So thanks. Thank you, counselors. Appreciate those comments. And I'll, I'll just add a couple of comments to this. I, I think that it's very clear that that lower speeds uh, save lives, and and that is you know irrefutable. Um, and you know, as someone who takes a lot of concerns from a, a lot of people uh, about traffic safety, um, anything that has um, the potential to communicate and educate drivers uh, uh, about safer ways to operate their motor vehicles, um, you know, on our roadways or on pedestrians and bicyclists is, is something that I support. Um, just a couple of sort of operational notes and, and kind of technical pieces to this. I do think it's important to note that communication and education around this initiative is going to be important. I think that there are um, in my experience has been ongoing confusion about the difference between a regulatory speed limit and a statutory speed limit. And this is a statutory speed limit change, um, not a regulatory speed limit change as it introduced. Um, and this applies to areas that are thickly settled. It does not have the ability to, to supersede, you know, in its form as it's written, um, you know, a posted regulatory speed limit of, you know, 40 miles an hour somewhere. Um, there are other tools that we can potentially use um, to change those regulatory speed limits, but the applicability of this ordinance is to areas that are thickly settled. So there is a need for communication and education for folks, you know, if if this ordinance is to pass and as this ordinance kind of comes out of committee and goes through the process, you know, to legislative matters and back to council, I think it is important that there is a communication and education piece that the applicability of this ordinance it is only to very specific streets in the city and, and those actually have to be identified. And those are streets which do not have a posted regulatory speed limit on them. Many of them are dead end streets. Many of them are less than a quarter mile long. Many of them are, are you know, again, like cul-de-sacs, dead end streets. Many of them we actually don't field speeding complaints on. So there, there is kind of a, a conversation or, or at least comments that need to be made to that end. What To what streets does this actually apply? How do we communicate that out to folks? And what are the expectations going to be for signage at the city limits? And how will the signage at the city limits sort of interplay with the existing signage at the city limits? Um, and what will the expense be to change that? So there are um, again, sort of educational pieces to this, communication pieces to this, and then the practical application of, of what are the expectations um, on, on city departments going to be to actually sort of implement this uh, as, as folks kind of catch wind of it and, and you know, want to see sort of tangible um, outcomes of, of an ordinance that has been passed. So that, those would be my comments uh, uh, on behalf of Public Works. Um, Chief, if you'd like to um, weigh in, I'd appreciate it. Sure, yeah. Um, you know, I think we're all, everyone's excited about people driving slower. I would enjoy that. I think all of our officers would enjoy that. And I think we'd see a dramatic uh, decrease in, in motor vehicle collisions uh, if people drove slower. Um, I share in, in some of your concerns, Director, just as far as, um, you know, if, if, if we don't have the money to put up the sign, if we don't have the money and the people and the time and energy because everyone's all overtasked and, and doesn't have the, the funding, um, when, if the signs don't go up um, in all these streets, uh, my concern is people are gonna be expecting things that aren't going to happen. So that is my greatest concern with this ordinance is just 
Um, I've already heard people calling saying, oh, I'm so excited because once this passes now, it's going to be 25 on my street. And I look at their street and I'm like, nope, <laughs> it doesn't impact your street. So already I know there's confusion about this ordinance out there. And already I'm getting questions and, and people that are um, excited about what they think it is. And then there is a difference between maybe what people think it is and then our actual abilities to um, change speed on their particular road. So I'm hopeful that if this does go through um, and there is some sort of kind of announcement about this and, and um, some sort of release, the public uh, press release or something, uh, maybe we could consider you know, getting those streets on there ahead of time so that people know ahead of time um, whether or not they're going to be included. And then my other concern, of course, is the people on those streets uh, that are going to be calling us to, to, um, for signs and for enforcement, and it will um, be a challenge for us and actually, honestly, uh, impossible really to meet the demands that may come if we have a lot of people asking us to have presence on their street as we already can't have presence on the number of streets that we have. Um, so I have kind of poked around at this. I, I've seen the some of the streets that are gonna be involved, they're not streets that come to mind to me as having significant speeding issues or any collisions really. Um, so I, I love slowing people down. As I said, I wish everyone would drive more slowly everywhere, uh, but I, I do just worry about um, if this passes then the impact that that will have on this, this commission and what people's expectations are and our potential inability to, to meet those uh, expectations and requests. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Appreciate that. Um, I think I'd like to open this up for discussion to uh, other members of the commission. I don't know if uh, anyone on the commission has any comments on this. Jamie, I see your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, uh, generally, I'm very supportive of a measure like this. But given the comments, especially from Chief Casper, can you help us understand what exactly are the city's plans for posting signs where that makes sense at the city limits or on the streets and educating the public on, on these new rules? Yeah, we, I think we don't really want to end up in a, in a place of confusion, right? Like there, there needs to be an education component that goes along with this. Yeah, and I think that that's, you know, been the conversation all along. Anytime, you know, we we um, pass something, we, we sort of wanna, um, anytime an ordinance comes up, we, we need to have you know, communication and education around it. So what exactly are our capabilities to respond to an ordinance like this? Many uh, communities pass this ordinance um, and, and lower the default speed limit from 30 miles an hour to 25 miles an hour, because it's, it's 30 right now in a thickly settled area. And that has a specific legal definition of, of a certain, uh, housing density within a certain stretch of, of, you know, roadway, like with certain linear feet of roadway. Um, you know, so a, a lot of communities opt into this, um, and do nothing. They do no education. They post no signage. They just, opt into it is is sort of a philosophical um you know comment on um community priorities um some cities really put a lot of signage up i mean there's many many communities where you know you hit the city limits and there's a big sign that says you know 25 miles an hour and thickly settled uh, zones and less otherwise posted, you know, the unless otherwise posted is is sort of the the crux of the conversation we're having. You know, most of Northampton's 160 miles of roadway have a regulatory speed limit, which means the speed limit is otherwise posted. Um, we have uh, 20 entries to the city limits. Um, so in terms of communication, if we were to say, okay, um, we are going to put signage at the city limits announcing this change, you know, we are looking at a five figure initiative um, to purchase signs to um, engineer where they're going to be placed and how they're going to be placed and then to actually pay for their installation. Um, in all circumstances, you would have that sign uh, very close to a regulatory speed limit of, you know, 40 miles an hour or 35 miles an hour or some speed limit, which is not 25 miles an hour, which could potentially be confusing. 
um, and, you know, which you do see in other communities. So, um, you know, the practical application of signage um, is definitely a conversation and certainly one that's that's been um, swirling around for for quite some time. And that, I think that conversation would have to continue in terms of is this a, a, an expense or an initiative that that the city feels is important that that we need to spend sort of our limited funds on. Um, Adam, I see your hand up. OK, um, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. OK, great. Um, I think that people already don't know that the statutory speed limit is uh, 30 miles an hour. So they would just now not know that it's 25. Um, and my feeling about this is uh, just a couple of things. Um, sometimes I feel that people from the public bring uh, a, a problem that they have on their street forward, but then what winds up happening is the statutory speed limit's 30, and then we allow a little bit of leeway over that. Um, and so I think in, there are some cases, and it's pretty rare that, uh, or actually, I don't, I don't, maybe I won't, don't want to comment on the rarity of it. But at any rate, there are sometimes cases where I feel that there's a legitimate problem that becomes quantified as not legitimate because the statutory speed limit is higher than it needs to be. Um, and I'll just leave that at that. And the other thing is, I feel like this is less about enforcement uh, per se, and more about sort of design standards and building the city that we want ultimately. So if we're building to a 25 mile an hour standard, I would imagine that that's different than a 30 mile an hour standard. And I think in some future that I will probably not be a part of um, because it's way down the road that uh, years of us working on this new statutory speed limit standard will change the city um, in ways that uh, will be significant and of lasting value. So I'm out on that. Okay. Thanks, Adam. Diana, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I definitely second Adam's comments about how there are situations I recall where it seems like problems, you know, in people's experience on their streets have been kind of defined as non problems because, you know, there was the 80 percentile is the delta between the, the default speed limit was not something that we could could look at. Um, the question I had was um, Councillor Jarrett's comments about the design standards and you know having this default speed limit as kind of a tool in our toolbox going forward as we're trying to weigh I guess what is the short-term education problem with the public which does seem like it it would be significant to the longer term impacts and I was wondering if there was a practical way that we could maybe hear about what the city will do for, you know, if like when we're designing roads, when things are happening long-term, what, what is the process and how, how will this help us from a design perspective? I think I'm glad you asked the question because I, I do think that, it, you know, I, I, I want to make it clear. There's not, um, like a design book that has, you know, a chapter for 25 miles an hour versus a chapter for 30 miles an hour. Um, and and I, I think that often, you know, people may um, imagine that to be the case. Um, and, and really, you know, when we're designing a roadway and Main Street is a very good example of this, I, I mean, it's a complete streets process. So, so at this point, you know, anytime we're in um, an arterial roadway or collector roadway, or, you know, we are looking at, okay, what do we have for right of way? What do we have for pavement with? And what can we, what can we fit for facilities in here? Um, you know, how we, how mathematically, you know, when we add everything up, can we get a sidewalk? Can we get a bicycle lane? Can we get, 
um, you know, a tree belt, you know, can we get a, a raised bicycle track? I mean, you know, it's, we look at that for every single roadway and our goal is always enhanced bicycle, pedestrian and vehicle safety. Yeah, I mean, all three sort of, you know, talk to each other. So I, I think that, you know, this ordinance is a step towards kind of putting, you know, a philosophy out there that we believe that lower speeds save lives and that we are committed to a complete streets sort of process for any road that, that we're reconstructing to the greatest extent possible. And I say to the greatest extent possible because, it, you know, there are plenty of roads like we just don't have enough space. We do not have enough space to put in, you know, a travel lane and a bicycle lane and a sidewalk. So we have to sort of work with what we're given, um, it, you know, rather than like an eminent domain taking or something. So I, I think that, you know, this this ordinance is a good uh, mindset for us it's it, but in terms of you know is there a design standard that we are now going to adhere to because this ordinance passes it, the answer is simply no it, 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 that's not the case it's not like here's my 25 mile an hour design book that that's not an accurate statement councillor foster go ahead yeah um i hear you so maybe if if um give us a little more information like when when Fasten O'Neill comes to do, um, you know, a traffic study or make recommendations, um, and we talk about they're designing for the speed limit. So when we talk about if they're designing for 30 miles an hour or they're designing for 25 miles an hour, can can you talk about what some of those differences may be or are they so negligible? I, I guess that, that's something I could use some help understanding. It, I think that there's a lot of ways to... Um, create a roadway design. And again, it depends on exactly what you're doing, but there's a lot of ways to create a roadway design that encourages shared use. And, and that's what we try to do. That's what Main Street's trying to do. We're trying to encourage shared use. So, it, it, you know, remember this is, a, a, a resource issue, you know, so so you can sort of make these projects as big or as little as is, you know, your your budget allows. Um, but, it, you know, when we talk about designing a roadway for shared use, what you want to do is create the perception uh, on the driver's part of how fast they feel they can reasonably go. Because ultimately, and we've heard this before, but it bears repeating, people drive the speed they feel comfortable driving. They're not necessarily looking at the speed limit. They're saying, how does this road feel? Do I feel like I can go 45? Because if I do, that's what I'm going to go, even if the speed limit's 30. Um, so, you know, when we think about how we're designing roadways, we try to, uh, you know, put paint on the ground that sort of communicates to drivers, okay, you know, don't uh, cross the double yellow center line or don't go into this bicycle lane or, you know, don't block the intersection when you're stopped at the stoplight. Um, it, but again, there are a lot of different things that you can use to communicate to drivers. Cardinal Way is a really good example of this. That roadway was actually designed with pretty intense curves to encourage traffic coming, to encourage people to go slowly. I mean, you can't go 45 miles an hour through those curves. It's just physically impossible. So, I, you know, I think that certainly we notify Fuss and O'Neill, yes, we've opted into this ordinance, but it's very clear for any traffic engineer who's working for any municipality within the Commonwealth that the goal is slower speeds. I mean, ideally, we'd like to see every, you know, the speed limit is a limit. It's not, you know, a recommendation or, you know, a median or whatever. I mean, it's, it's a limit. So ideally, we'd like to see people operating at or below that speed. So it, it, again, I think this is more sort of philosophy about what community values are rather than, you know, something that Foss and O'Neill is going to say, okay, well, we have this document. Now we have to design this road differently. So the, the goal is always to slow the traffic down, um, you know, to the extent that your topography uh, uh, and your resources allow. Okay. That's helpful. Thank you. Um, so, you know, it's interesting because as a driver, I know when I enter communities with the 25 mile per hour thickly settled signs on the way in, it does sort of catch me and change my intention. I also know I'm a driver who's very aware of pedestrians and cyclists. So, you know, I, I don't mean to expand, extrapolate that that's going to impact everybody. Um, but I do think it sets an intention. And then, 
you know, to your point, and, and I remember we were looking at um, speed limits at Village Hill, right? And like part of a street is thickly settled and the next part is not thickly settled and, and it gets very, very confusing. Um, but it, in some ways as a driver entering a city, kind of if you don't know what's thickly settled and you have your intention of driving 25 miles per hour, it doesn't, it doesn't matter that much. But I get on the enforcement side and the logistics side, the DPW and police are charged with enforcing that that that, that complicates things. Um, and so I, I guess one question I have for you is with the um, the opt in to the 25 mile per hour speed limit, has has Mazda offered any grant funding or is there any support to help communities kind of roll this out, um, you know, with with signage and education and those kinds of things. And then before you you answer that, just a, a quick comment to the sponsors that I had shared. Um, but the word bicyclist appears quite a bit um, in the ordinance, and I just would love to offer the suggestion that we change it to cyclist just to, to change our perception of, of what cycling looks like. Thanks, Councillor. I mean, I think MassDOT has a, a huge amount of grant programs. Sorry about my telephone. You know, it has a, a lot of grant programs, many of which we participate in for, for this specifically. Um, I, I'm not aware of specific grant programs around this. I mean, they have, you know, their Safe Routes to School program, which you're certainly taking advantage of. And Carolyn, I see your hand up. Maybe you can talk a little bit more about opportunities with them. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, um, I think you're on the right track. I think we're always looking for funding um, opportunities to address um, and calm streets and we have because we know the list of um, requests and demand and our many of our streets are um, built for cars only and we have changed you know that and we as a community don't want um, our streets just um, to accommodate uh, motor vehicles only. And so I wasn't really going to add anything about particular um, grant funding. I don't, I think your question was more about maybe funding for signage or implementation as opposed to, um, you know, targeting physical street changes. And I guess, you know, that leads to something else I wanted to mention in going back to what um, um, uh, Donna, you said about you know, we, I don't, I think you mentioned we don't have signs now at the entries, the 20 entries to the city that say the statutory speed limit is 30 unless otherwise um, posted. But um, I think you did also mention that that sign is typically you design, you figure out where it needs to go, but it might be on Route 66 where there's a 40 posted or a 35. So my response when I enter communities is, oh, it's 35, but oh my gosh, you've got a 45 posted right next to that. That's very odd. <laughs> and so I think there's a lot of mixed messaging there. And I would certainly recommend, I mean, I totally agree with what um, the other members have talked about in terms of setting, you know, our priorities and identity and saying this is a much safer speed and we want to be a community that, you know, over time we can get to that point where all of our streets in those sort of thickly settled areas are um, designed, not just signed, to be 25. Um, and, but in the meantime, I don't, I think it would be, in, it is very confusing to understand which streets would fall under this classification. And I think in the very least, there should be maps of which streets this would immediately affect so people can see, oh, it's only these little tiny segments. And which streets have we had issues um, identified where um, people have, um, where there've been accidents or, or speeding complaints, because I think that is really sort of helps people understand that we're talking about a pretty small number of street segments at the moment, you know, um, without any further changes. And, and um, but, and on top of that, I think the expectations about sort of calling um, DPW for signs and calling police for enforcement have to be very much tempered um, because that's not really what's going to get people to slow down. 
Yeah, thanks, Carolyn. And, and I'll also just add, you know, a lot of municipalities who've opted into this are in the eastern part of the state. So when we think about what's a thickly settled area, you know, all of Boston is thickly settled. You have a particular population density. You know, most places do not have a regulatory speed limit. I think of sort of the cobweb of neighborhoods in, you know, South Boston or East Boston. And, and it's it very easily applied to their roadway network. Northampton's a little bit more complex in that we sort of alternate between thickly settled and not thickly settled. Um, so again, this goes back to sort of the education and communication component of, of passing this ordinance to manage expectations so that people understand you know, what this actually applies to. And, and that does uh, um, require some level of analysis on on our part, you know, um, through planning um, to sort of generate those maps and, and lists and, and get that posted and communicated to folks. So, and, you know, again, it's a it, it's a level of effort on on city administrators part. Councillor Gore, I see your um, your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, I um, I agree that that this is a good like philosophical um, thing to do for our city, and I think that it's a good start um, to try to implement more changes to the speed limit overall. And I think going slower is always better. And I know when I go into cities that have the sign that says 25 miles per hour in thickly settled areas, I, I notice those signs and. I, I think that it would be good to, to have if um, if we would have the funding for it. That's the only thing that I would be concerned about is, um, you know, the funding for so many signs of the inmates to the city um, would be my concern. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. Claudia, I do see your hand up. I just want to... Um sort of work through the conversation among um, commission members at the moment. I don't know if anyone else has any other follow-up comments on this or I'm happy to open it to the public, if not. Okay, Claudia, just if you could uh, restate your name for the record, please. Hi, Claudia Lefko, 40 Valley Street. The conversation is really interesting. And I'll say that in this neighborhood, Montview, where I live, 40 Valley Street, we've had two traffic calming committees that worked the first one for two or three years in 2006. And the second one was around 2010 or 11. And one of the things that we we discovered in our investigation was that you can calm traffic in a lot of ways by like plantings along the roadway or neighborhoods can put up their own handmade signs or art or whatever that attracts the attention that sort of grabs the view of drivers that says oh i'm in a neighborhood and that it doesn't cost the city really any money in our neighborhood we were willing to pay for this ourselves on some level but the city kept denying us the capacity to do this and i'm gonna that's kind of another topic but i'm just saying that on some level throw this it doesn't need to be the city quote unquote the city's decision throw this to the neighborhoods because it's in our interest to have slow traffic in our neighborhoods and i think like us other places probably want to slow the traffic and we don't need to depend on you for solutions because every neighborhood is different it's very cool what people have done for traffic calming when you get into it so that's my comment thanks, thanks so much appreciate it okay next is ben go ahead ben hi um ben weil 123 audubon road in leeds um so i want to speak in favor of of the ordinance generally I, I think everyone agrees that uh slower is better um but i also think it's worth kind of considering the historical place that that we are so that 30 mile an hour statutory speed limit was a stat that was established when most people drove cars <laughs> and now most people actually drive suvs and or light trucks and as we add electric vehicles we're adding vehicles with greater mass and uh, momentum is mass times velocity. So if we can slow the velocity, the uh, uh, the effect of hitting, uh, say, a pedestrian or a cyclist or something is lower. Um, and that we actually need to change our speed limits to reflect 
the vehicles that are on the roads now. Um, the other thing that I think is really how we should be setting speed limits is based on how what is the distance required to stop. And at different speeds, it requires uh, a longer or shorter distance to stop. And the distance that you need to stop is based on how far ahead can you see. And um, so, you know, so that's that's not how we establish speed limits right now. So having a statutory speed limit, I don't think I, I hope that you don't spend a lot of money on signs because I think it, as uh, uh, Donna said, that people don't really drive based on the posted speed limit. They drive based on how comfortable they feel. So I think investing in infrastructural changes to affect speed limits are what's really important. Um, and there was a comment that uh, the DPW director said that we we don't have a design book for 25 miles an hour. And it's true, we don't. But lots of other places do. <laughs> and we could probably borrow from them. So uh, generally the lower. So I've, I've recently been looking at Oslo, Norway. And I realize it's a different country, different laws and all that. But they have design book for all the specified speed limits that they want. They also don't use posted signs as their method. Um, and they use things, a lot of the techniques that, that Donna already talked about, narrowing the traffic way, chicanes, or you know, uh, having some oscillation in the road. Um, but they actually have it all kind of spelled out. So we, we could do that. And I think a first step is to have a statutory speed limit. Finally, um, the concern that there will be demands from residents to have help slowing traffic down to the new uh, statutory speed limit shouldn't dissuade us from creating a statutory speed limit. It's an indicator that people would like cars to drive slower and that if this is a democracy, then the city needs to communicate them to them, well, here's what you, the citizens, need to do to get that to happen. Um, but shying away from it doesn't seem like a, a good way to approach it. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate your comments. Next is Angie. Go ahead, Angie. Hi, thank you. Um, so I'm a resident at 595 Haydenville Road, right at the line of Northampton and Williamsburg. Um, much different to drive on Route 9, um, but I would say um, I'm definitely in support of um, you know, this order to create the statutory speed limit for 25 miles an hour. Um, and I, I agree with other sentiments around um, the importance of this being a first step towards roadway redesign in certain areas. I wanted to highlight um, the recent redesign on Leonard Street off of Haydenville Road across from Linda Manor, where the slip lane was converted into a very more uh, 90 degree right turn, which has really slowed down um, the speed of cars as they enter Leonard Street. Um, and continue down that um, residential road. Um, so uh, one other thought that I had that I just wanted to share for the commission and just kind of as a question, um, as I hear that communications around this um, potential um, change would need to be, um, you know, kind of communicated to residents um, would be to kind of provide perhaps some like demonstrations, like street demonstrations. Um, so using different kinds of, um, you know, livable street, street approaches, um, having a, a block party, encouraging neighborhoods um, either through their counselors or uh, neighborhood associations to have block parties to um, you know, close the street for a day and also have a conversation around this topic as well as other things. Um, and maybe even um, implementing the city's owned parklet that I know kind of uh, rotates around and maybe choosing some of these streets where, where this um, statutory is going to um, kind of be implemented as uh, as a way to kind of you know in real time and in person um, through a demonstration of an object that goes into the street that reduces the roadway um, temporarily and creates a lower speed to then be the platform for some of these conversations in the in those um, streets. So those are my my offers or um, just kind of uh, questions if that seems like a reasonable thing and what type of support either the DPW or the um, Bike and Pedestrian Committee might need to implement something like that. Thanks, Angie. Appreciate it. 
Okay, next is Elena. Hold on, let me unmute you. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Elena Hoosman, and I live at 19 Man Terrace in Florence. Um, thank you so much for having this conversation today. I think it's a really important one to have um, and wanted to voice my thoughts around uh, supporting this ordinance. I think it's really important that we start the conversation within our city um, to lower the speed limits. Um, I, I live on a pretty quiet street, so I'm fortunate enough to not have um, much traffic on my street, but I also live really close to Pine Street, um, which recognize that there is a posted speed limit on there of 30. Um, and I just, you know, I, I just really think it's important to slow slow traffic down as much as possible and, and have this philosophy in, in, in our, you know, toolkit, um, if you will, um, to, to be able to work towards what the future that we all want, um, or most of us want. <laughs> um, and I also would say, I, I think the research um, is pretty clear that if we're able to slow traffic, we're able to save lives, both those who are driving vehicles, but also pedestrians and cyclists on the street. Um, and I think to Angie's point, I really liked her ideas around um, doing block parties and increasing livable street opportunities and, and bringing the community together around these educational opportunities. I'd also suggest that the city lean on some of the nonprofits in the city. Um, I'm a member of Friends of Northampton Trails, and I think they would be more than happy to um, support the city in an education campaign to make sure that we're able to get the word out. Um, so just to generally say, I think this is great to have. Um, I would really love to see this commission move this forward in the process to hopefully have this 25 mile per hour ordinance in place. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your comments. Devin, go ahead, see your hand up. Thank you, this is just a quick comment, um, <laughs> which I'm sure you'll appreciate. Um, I have a pace car sticker on my back window and it would be easy to put this information about what, what is the pace of your car in those neighborhoods that are dense, because it's, it's not uncommon for someone to ask me, what is a pace car? And for all of us that have spent this time talking about the difference between ordinance and regulation and 25 mile an hour and design speed, I think, engaging one-on-one -on -one with people who have a curiosity about what does that mean, that sticker on your window. Um, so I would just say, I, I wish more people had gotten involved in the pace car idea. I think it's a really uh, good one. And I think uh, using that as a mechanism to talk about this is, is a good idea. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Devin. Okay, Jacqueline. Um, I do want to mention just we are we do have uh, quite a bit of uh, agenda still left, so I am going to have to ask folks who are speaking to please limit uh, the time of your comments uh, to two minutes just so we can get through our agenda in a timely manner here, but I appreciate everybody's comments. So Jacqueline, I'm going to unmute you. Just need name again for the record, please. Hi, Jacqueline McCraner, North Street, Ward 3, Northampton. I guess I'm getting a reputation for speaking a long time. I'm sorry about that. Um, I support this order, and I live on North Street where there's three speed humps. Um, two are kind of ineffective. There's one that's closer to the intersection of North and Lincoln, where I think the residents really fought to have that particular speed hump increased. And I think that that is really effective in slowing down traffic and you know accomplishing traffic calming. But the other two near Saluzniak Funeral Home and then closer to Parsons Street, those intersections of with Orchard and Parsons and North Street, those are, are, are milder. And at first when all three went in, it seemed like drivers sped up just to kind of get a lift going over there. Um, so I encourage if, if those get used to beef them up. Um, I'm actually pro signage. I think American drivers are used to seeing speed limits posted. So I, I like the thought of, of signage and um, some cars, newer cars at least post the speed limit. Like you can see that from the dashboard and, and it's a really helpful tool. If, um, if the road has the speed limit posted, then that shows up on the car, uh, whatever it is, dash, and, and it helps you drive that. I'm also just curious, is there a ballpark figure for how much funding there is per traffic 
for traffic signage per year in Northampton and how much is generally spent on traffic signage per year. And that's it. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so we have a, um, a traffic calming budget for uh, the entire city. It's a capital request that I make every year. Um, it used to be $25,000 um, and uh, it, it has recently been increased to $50,000. Ha however, I just wanna be clear what that's for. It's for all engineering, for things that we discuss at this commission. Um, it's for uh, things that may come out of this discussion. Um, that I, that are not like huge reconstruction projects. It pays for things like the uh, pedestrian markers that we see in the middle of crosswalks um, and, and the parts needed to potentially repair those if they get hit or damaged. So, you know, that $50,000 has to get a considerable amount of mileage off of it. So, um, you know, limited budget um, and we do the best we can to make those dollars stretch. Um, so next is Matt. Can I unmute you? Go ahead, Matt. Hi, thank you. Uh, I'm Matt Coase. I'm on Graves Ave in Northampton. And I just wanted to speak in favor of the of the uh, of a motion. Um, I come from Fairhaven, Mass, where we passed this uh, 25 mile per hour in 2018. Uh, that city is smaller, but not a ton. It's got a very dense section and then a farmy section on the outside. Uh, it is bordered on two sides by water, so we only have five roads going in and out. But uh, it was a conversation immediately in town because of the signage. Uh, people it, it never knew that there was a 30 mile per hour statutory limit, and suddenly they knew there was 25, and it definitely changed the character of a lot of the roadways. That is it for me. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much for your comments. I think um, we've had a good discussion here. Uh, I'll ask if um, one of the commission members would like to make a motion uh, around this proposed ordinance. Move a proposed or move a positive recommendation. Devin seconds. Okay, is there any further discussion around this over and above? We've already talked about. Councillor Nash, go ahead. Unmute. Yeah, uh, uh, Councillor Foster had suggested a friendly amendment to change from uh, bicyclist to cyclist, and um, I'm fine with that happening here. Are we, both Councillor Jarrett and I are fine with that amendment happening here, or at at council should it come back? I um, it that's fine. Uh, procedurally, um, do we need to revise? The motion you just made, Councillor Foster, for a positive recommendation with uh, bicyclist replaced with cyclist, would that be more appropriate? Ooh, Councillor Nash and Jarrett, you, you could help out here too, but that, that makes sense as revised, a uh, uh, motion for a positive recommendation to the ordinance as revised. Seconded as revised. Okay, so Beth, the motion is for a positive recommendation to this ordinance with the word bicyclist replaced with cyclist. Right, I have that right? Okay. All right, is there any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, Beth, if you could call the roll, please. Donna? Yes. Judy? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Devin? Yes. Diana? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamila? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Adam? Yes. Again, that's passing unanimously. Okay, thank you, Beth. Next is a proposed ordinance relative to parking on Williams Street. So by way of discussion, this is a request from Councillor Jim Nash. The east side of Williams Street by Montview already has existing no parking zones. And what we have is uh, conflicts with um, 
folks trying to swing through this intersection. Um, so we we definitely have uh, conflicts between drivers uh, coming out of Montview and those traveling on William Street. So I will read the ordinance relative to parking on William Street, an ordinance of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts, be it ordained by the city council of the city of Northampton and city council assembled as follows. Section one, that's section 312-102 of the code of ordinances be amended as follows. Section 312-102, schedule one, parking prohibited at all times, location, William Street side westerly from a point 25 feet north of Montview Avenue to a point 35 feet south of Montview Avenue. And I'll ask Councillor Nash if he would be willing to comment on this. Yeah, thank you, Donna. Yeah, so this, uh, over the last year or so, there's been a lot of conversation in the neighborhood about a particular de de development, which I cannot talk about, but I can speak to the traffic concerns that were raised relative to this intersection during those discussions. And that what was clear was that the current conditions, whether or not that development occurs, um, uh, there was a lot of concern about the safety of the way vehicles are traveling through the intersection. So I um, I made the request to DPW to look into this matter uh, relative to the the um, the parking arrangement at the intersection because it seemed to be forcing uh, eliminating the two way travel lane and turning travel through the intersection into this one lane of courtesy travel and that um so my request was for db dpw to look into this and these are the this is the recommendation and um and i i i thank you for doing this and um and uh i i i think it would be great if we could implement this so thank you okay thank you counselor um I'd like to ask uh, if someone would like to make a motion around this ordinance. Move a positive recommendation. Second. Okay. okay. Um, and now I see a hand up from the public. So we will uh, recognize Claudia. Hi again, ahead, Claudia. 40 Valley Street. So, I don't know if Councillor Nash took a survey of the neighborhood before he recommended this, because historically, I've lived at 40 Valley Street for, I hate to say it, but 45 years now. And um, historically, it's, this has been a problem, but the, the biggest problem is the traffic on William Street, that it's a very big pass, pass by. I, the screen, I'm having trouble because the whole screen is taken up by the diagram instead of people. And so I, I find this very disconcerting, but I'll try to carry on anyway. So the problem really is the speed of the traffic and there's a lot of traffic coming by William Street. So in response to that, historically people have chosen to park there and order and park in fact, all along William Street as a traffic calming strategy. So. It seems to me before you would decide to do this that people might take a little survey of the neighborhood as it's obviously from I sent you this letter clear that there are a lot of issues in the neighborhood around traffic. It's Holyoke Street and it's William Street and, and then Hawkenham Road and stuff. So, but I feel like this, this you shouldn't, or it doesn't seem proper that you would go forward with this without consulting the people who are the residents right in this area. Um, that's my one thing. And the second thing is to say that that if you want to deal with the traffic on William Street, this is the least concern of that I've ever I, I've never heard this be a concern myself that that traffic park the parking there is a problem. And I'm saying that because in 2006, we had a traffic calming committee. It met for three years and there were recommendations from the neighborhood that resulted from that. And none of the recommendations had to do with eliminating parking. Then we had another traffic calming commission committee in 2010 or 11. And again, nobody said that that inter like eliminating parking at that intersection was going to be helpful. 
we had a lot of other ideas, which I talked about before, about how to sort of focus people on the fact they were in a neighborhood. But so if, if I think we need attention in the neighborhood to traffic, but I think this is the least concern. Um, so I would, and if, if you're going to pass it, I would say better, it seems to me the neighborhood should be, should be asked and see what the opinion is first. Thanks. Thank you for your comment. Okay, Councillor Nash, go ahead. Yeah, um, so prior to the meeting uh, on Sunday evening, I sent out notice of this, this recommended change to 65 folks within the neighborhood. Um, and they have been invited to this public meeting to share their, their thoughts on this. Um, I've received, um, uh, actually, I haven't received a lot of comment one way or the other. Uh, I've received uh, the email that you all received from Ms. Levko uh, that uh, is concerned that this is some, somehow associated with the uh, development, which did, was not what was prompting my request here. And also that my request here was not to eliminate parking uh, based on, um, it, it, it was to look at the travel through the intersection and, and come up with suggesting a solution and parking, eliminating the parking was, seemed to be the right answer. Um, so that's my response. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nash. I, I will add that we deal with this in a lot of locations around the city where we have sort of a T intersection. Um, you know, our priority anytime we review an intersection, um, sort of irrespective of, you, you know, um, the other issues, our obligation is to keep it open for emergency vehicles. You know, we always like to think of, okay, there's, you know, a fire truck that needs to get through here, or there's, um, a, you know, any sort of vehicle that needs to get through here. And there are absolutely places in the city where we have known conflicts at T intersections um, where parking is difficult. And we have, you know, general prohibitions in the parking code around that, um, that require you to, you know, keep certain clearances out of intersections. But sometimes we do need to intervene and, and actually create an ordinance um, to open up an intersection. And so when we did our analysis of this area, um, this does appear to be one of those locations, sort of irrespective of, of other development in the area or um, other considerations. And again, we review these on a case-by-case -case basis, and, and this is what our analysis found. So that's that's just uh, comments on behalf of the DPW. Now, if there's any other comments uh, from anyone on the commission. Okay, Claudia, I see your hand up again. I, we are running very late on time. I'll just ask you to make your comment brief, please. Sorry, it is going to be brief, but what's discouraging to me is the fact that we brought this up before this development was proposed, was approved, and there was no comment from DPW or whomever about the dangerousness of this location and this intersection. And that's why I wrote to you, because I find that disheartening. So that's my comment. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion among members of the commission? on this. So I believe we have a motion for a positive recommendation on the floor. Okay, seeing and hearing none, Beth, please call the roll. All right, just give me a moment. Okay, Donna. Yes. Jody. Yes. Jamie. Yes. Devin. Yes. Diana. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Karen. Yes. Jamila. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Adam. Yes. Passes unanimously. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, next is a proposed ordinance relative to accessible parking spaces. Um, the ordinance is quite long and I will not be reading it, um, but we do have uh, Keith here from planning. So I'm going to turn this over to you, Keith, and I do believe you have the ability to share your screen. Well, uh, well, I'm about to give you that ability, so hold on just a second. Okay, so I will turn this over to you now, Keith, for, and you can run us through. Um, okay, um, can you all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, and are you looking at uh, 23.306? You can see it. Okay, so I'm just going to have this up here for a moment. <clears throat> um, this is the ordinance, and you notice on the left-hand side are some red letters. Um, at once I go into my other screen, my other presentation, I'm going to be referencing the letters. So if we need to go back, uh, it'll be really easy to just reference the letter as opposed to Bridge Street Northwesterly location. Um, so can you now see? Um, um, a different text. Yep. Uh, okay, so. Um, why are we doing this? Um, so I'm looking at all of the on-street and off-street um, accessible parking spaces uh, and really find trying to figure out what we have and are we in compliance with the ADA. Um, you know, so does the ordinance match the actual parking spaces as they exist in the real life? And they don't. Uh, we've had a lot of um, changes uh, physically um, and then just as I kind of, I went to every single parking space in the city and and kind of did an analysis. Um, but a lot of the changes are really a language to try to bring them consistent so that we have consistent language throughout, try to make them more um, easier to audit. And when I say audit, having the schedule uh, with you and being able to say, okay, the fourth street or the fourth accessible parking space from City Hall, okay, I can see it, it's there. Um, so uh, I, I'm gonna uh, just briefly kind of go over these and then in the presentation, you'll see each one of them. Um, so ordinal numbers, so first, second, third, um, it's inconsistent. Uh, some of them use distance, some of them use uh, second and third, uh, I'm going, I'm going to propose that we go move towards first, second, third, et cetera. Um, also inconsistent with using the word parking space versus just space. So I'm, I am um, in general um, to remove parking where it's found, self-referential language, meaning dot, 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 said parking space, inconsistent. It's only in a few of them, remove it. Um, and then parking class information, it's inconsistent. Um, we have another schedule with parking class information. So I'm proposing we remove that where it's found. Um, as I said, the reference points have changed in some of these. For example, City Hall 2018 or so, we remove one of the parking spaces. So um, the fifth space become the fourth space. Um, so we need to update that. Um, and some of the reference points are challenging. Um, so you'll see in the presentation, um, the Pleasant Street parking space near um, out near Steels and Deals, it's the 12th parking space from Short Street. And it's very confusing to get there, which you'll see. Um, and then there's a lot of off street parking spaces, so parking lots that we have in real life that don't exist in the schedule. Um, so on the ordinance, um, now I'm gonna be referencing this letter, or this, what you see on the screen here, uh, bold and underlined, you know, uh, and the strike through is um, what we'll be removing. Um, so I will be going now. Okay, can you see the image of uh, historic Northampton? Okay, so, um, it currently reads 418th Street from Market Street. That's very confusing. Unless you have a tape measure, that's 418 feet. Um, you don't know if you're out of compliance, but it's the first parking space. 
uh, and I'm going to move quickly because there's 40 slides. Um, uh, I'm just saying, hey, it's going to be the first. So the change is going to be at the very bottom there. First parking space from Market Street and remove parking. Hampshire County Resources Center. Um, it says it's the first parking space, but it's actually the second parking space from um, Center Court, which you see circled on the left hand side. Um, this, the audit is from Main Street. So instead of counting from Main Street, just count from State Street. So it's the first parking space eastly of State Street. Uh, you'll notice here that there is no blue box and there's no sign. So this exists as an accessible parking space in the ordinance, but there is no designation in real life that it is one. So this is a maintenance issue. Um, I have also um, pulled all the maintenance issues. That's a separate issue. I'm not gonna be um, deliberating or talking about that here, um, but in the future, um, this may be blue and some people may ask why we're taking away spaces or adding them, but it exists in the ordinance since the eighties as being a space. Um, I'm, these don't exist at all. Um, when they put the, remove the street, they removed all the parking. So um, just asking that they be removed from the ordinance. Um, just language, remove parking, remove class information. And um, on the schedule, you'll see um, what side of the street, westerly, northwesterly, north, northerly, things like that. Um, this does not have that. So just adding westerly so that it is um, more consistent and um, easier to follow. Um, remove parking from this one, really easy. Um, again, uh, inconsistent it is a measurement distance, but it's the sixth parking space from North Painful. Um, I don't need a special tool to measure. I can just go out there and count uh, really easy. Uh, this is the one at City Hall where we're where you can see where that van is parked, one, two parking spaces. We did a little parklet um, in 2017, and then it was removed. So now the what was the fifth parking space is now the fourth. Um, and that's just the top down view of that. Um, Harlow luggage, um, just remove the parking. Bueno Usano just remove the word parking. Um, Florence Bank, this is also a distance um, measurement. We're just going to, it's the first parking space from Pleasant Street. So we're just changing it from distance to ordinal. Um, easy, it says spaces, but it's only a space. Just remove the S. Uh, remove parking and the word parking and the class information uh, for this one. Uh, this is the the confusing um, 12th space from Short Street. Um, it's only four parking spaces from Pearl. Um, so to the right of the screen is Short Street. And you can imagine counting 12 down to the arrow, but the first red box block there is a, looks like a parking space, but it's not, it should be. Um, and then there's a, um, a, a dotted line uh, down the second box there. So a little easier to audit if we're counting from Pearl. Um, just adding, changing E to Eastern um, and and kind of um, adding some um, context about the ramp. Um, said space located, self-referential, um, it's not clear, just remove that for clarity. Um, uh, this is Masonic Street. These have moved. So we're just um, changing where they are now um, in, real, in real life. Um, don't need to see that. Uh, just adding clarity here. It, it wasn't very clear from the previous um, ordinance where this was and uh, ZS. That is the um, the one the far left top left corner there. 
Okay, uh, Strong Avenue. Um, the two the two red boxes there. Um, that's where they are now. Um, but it's the way it is written. It is written as if you come in and they're to your right and your left. But that's not where they are in real life. So we're just changing it to reflect what's real life. Uh, roundhouse. These do not exist in the ordinance. Um, so we're just adding those to the schedule. Excuse me. These are where they are. You need to know. Um, so the the EJ Gary garage, uh, these do not exist in the schedule. Um, so the blue is kind of um, the ramp or the bridge to Thorns and the red is the uh, monthly parking. Um, so we're just adding that. That's the uh, monthly parking. That's from the bridge. Uh, Army Street, they don't exist in the schedule. Do they exist in real life? James House does not exist in the schedule. Forbes Library doesn't ex exist in the schedule. And then Hall of Records does not exist in the schedule. That's the extent of my presentation. Um, I'm happy to take questions. And uh, just for reference, the um, Disability Commission did um, was a positive recommendation from them uh, to move forward with this. Yeah, thanks, Keith. Appreciate it. This looks like some uh, good cleanup on your part. So thank you. Any comments from anyone on the commission? This wasn't moved for positive recommendation yet. No. Don't move. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. second. Who's the second on that? Was it Chief? Chief Casper is the second. Okay. Any other discussion from members of the commission or comments? Again, thank you for your efforts on this, Keith. This was a, a this has been very long developing, and and I know a lot of work went into this on your part. So, um, okay, Jacqueline, I see your hand up, so I will unmute you. Go ahead. Thank you, Director Lascalia, Jacqueline McCraner, Ward 3, Northampton. Um, I'm just curious, this is just a quick question about parking in a, um, you know, accessible parking space. Is When you're in that parking space, um, do typical, like, meter charges apply, um, or are those parking spaces free to the public? Um, I, Nancy, go ahead, if you wouldn't mind. So long as there is a valid disability placard clearly displayed or a disability license plate on the vehicle, that space, regardless of whether it is an HP space or not, the individual is not required to pay for parking. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate that clarification. Wow, yeah, thank you. Okay, any other comments from Anyone on the commission? We do have a motion for a positive recommendation on the floor. Okay, Councilor Foster, go ahead. Just real quick, I don't want to belabor it, but Keith, thank you for this presentation. It was, uh, reading that text would have been really hard, but but seeing it presented in the way you did made, made this really easy, and thanks for your work on this. Okay, any other comments? Okay. Thanks again, Keith. Seeing and hearing none. Beth, if you could call the roll, please. Donna? Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Devin? Yes. Diana? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamila? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Adam? Yes. Again, that passes unanimously. Okay, thanks, Beth. Next up are updates from Commission Chair and Vice Chair about previously submitted traffic calming requests. Um, so this is kind of how the process ends. It comes to us, uh, it, it, it ends with a uh, summary of our findings and a report out to the Commission um, about what action, if any, we believe that we should take. And then we communicate that out to the 
um, residents who made the original request and to the city councilors um, uh, uh, of the respective ward. So uh, Kensington Avenue, this traffic calming request was submitted July 4th of 2022. Um, and we discussed it uh, here um, in March of 2023. Um, Kensington Avenue, um, we collected uh, speed data and, and uh, the, uh, collision data. Um, we analyzed 3,225 vehicles um, from August 14th through the 30th of 2022. The average speed was 17 miles an hour. The 85th percentile was 23.5 miles an hour. Um, and this is a, a statutory speed limit of 30 miles an hour. Um, we did do a, a fairly... Um, uh, you know, thorough assessment of the area um, and based on an analysis of collision speed and roadway data, um, Chief Casper and I are in agreement that we do not recommend traffic calming measures at this time. So that will be, um, that information will be communicated out to the folks who made this request and also to um, the area counselor. Um, and then uh, the next one is Summer Street. So Summer Street, uh, came to us uh, again in June of last year. We discussed it here in March of 2023. Um, we actually took uh, quite a, a bit of commentary from residents who talked about insufficient signage um, in the area um, as, you know, this is a uh, um, uh, kind of a heavily trafficked corridor, and there was some uh, sort of confusion around, um, you know, how people should be uh, where, uh, moving down a one-way street. Um, so with that being said, Maggie, if you wouldn't mind just putting up the map um, that shows um, by how we're going to make some adjustments here. Um, and after we re reviewed this area, what we've determined is, is that we agree that there is insufficient signage. Um, and so we are going to be beefing that signage up per the attachment um, by installing uh, a couple more um, one-way signs as well as a wrong-way sign. Um, and we hope that that will better communicate to uh, folks in, in who may be tempted to go the wrong way, um, what the proper direction of traffic flow is. Um, but um, in general, we did not find that there was a speeding problem on this street. It, it was more around, um, again, at least based on the comments that we heard here, it was just more based around uh, driver confusion. So um, we, repair, we prepared a, uh, a response form similar to Kensington Avenue um, and will include um, this map and we will send that out to the affected residents and the city councilor in the area. So I don't know if there's any comments that anyone has on, on either of those. Okay, seeing and hearing none, is there any new business? Okay, Councillor Gore, go ahead. Um, I don't know if I agree with this now, but I, um, in public comment, it was talking about the bridge um, as whole street that was discussed under it. And I wonder if the commission has ever discussed that before. Right. I'm sorry, I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing you. Um, it, can you just say that again? Hall, something on Holly Street. The bridge that, that trucks get stuck under uh, near Holly Street, the market. Um, I wonder if the commission has ever talked about that before. Um, are you talking about the Main Street Railroad Bridge? Is yeah. That yeah, that that is um that is definitely uh, been a topic of conversation um, for quite some time. Councillor Nash actually gave a a um, a very uh, uh, detailed presentation to this commission uh, maybe last year or or about a year and a half ago on sort of his analysis of truck strikes and and you know root cause analysis. Um, we do believe with Coca Cola exiting the city. Um, that, that we will see less uh, truck versus uh, bridge conflicts. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, Councillor Foster, go ahead. Uh, sorry, real quick, I wasn't quite prepared with the information at my fingertips, um, Carolyn, when you were talking about the bike breakfast. The community bike breakfast is tomorrow from 7.30 to 9.30 on Merrick Lane, which is next to the Kelvin Theater, and that's sponsored by Friends of Northampton Trails and some other um, cycling advocacy organizations. 
Okay. Thanks, Councillor. Appreciate that. Okay. Anyone else? All right. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Beth, please call the roll. Uh, was that Adam? Yes. And who was the second? I didn't hear a second. Carolyn. Donna? Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Devin? Yes. Diana? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamila? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Adam? Yes. We voted to adjourn unanimously.